Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to extend my great, my heartful thanks to you. It's the third time over the recent couple of years when I have this opportunity to visit your country. And during those conferences, uh, I had lectures and presentations in Russian language, after which I was told that in St. Petersburg, it will be better if I uh, switch to English. Uh, what is the option, which are options, which are questions, and the early rectal cancer, is it the place for a total resurrection, uh, a mesorectal excision? Or are there other strategies which are available? So, is the TME an overtreatment in an early, early uh, rectal cancer? So, local techniques would be sufficient. Is it under treatment because we need, we do need new or adjuvant strategies, or is it optimal treatment for this kind of cancer? Why are we discussing it? Because usually a local excision of this kind of tumor is technically possible. The functional results are much better than of radical surgery, but the prognostic key, the key to the prognosis, to the survival of the patient, is not the tumor itself. And uh, we all knew it, this is the question of the relationship of the imaging and pathology of the status of the tumor. Uh, this was an adenoma classified uh, by, the, um, by the radiology in the beginning as the T1 tumor. This is the specimen of this. And we know that the key issues are lymph nodes. And according to the literature, we can predict the status of the lymph nodes in about 50%. It means we can flip the coin and have the same power of uh, um, knowledge about the status of the tumor and the, of, the, of the lymph nodes. And the bad news, and this will be the same bad news in the end of this lecture, is that until we make a resection, we make surgery, we will not know whether it is positive with this tumor, with this no, uh, lymph node is positive or negative. So uh, what is the situation in the literature? There was, uh, I think it's uh, 2015, it was a meta-analysis of the literature, very early cancer, T1 stage, not T2, N0, M0, adenocarcinoma, the comparison, uh, comparison between radical resection and local resection. There was only one randomized trial, it was underpowered, and 12 observational studies with uh, 2,800 patients. Local resection has worse five years overall survival and local recurrence. It's 72 more deaths per thousand patients, so it's significant for the patient. But at the cost or the privilege of the lower perioperative mortality, less complication and less stoma. And have a look at these plots. It's comparison of the transanal excision, transanal endoscopic microsurgery, and radical resection on points on, on this side favors radical resection, on this side local resection, and this is five years survival. The patients undergoing radical resection do have survival benefit. The same for the five years disease-free survival. Also, you see all these points on the plots on the right hand. One of these workers from my former university in, in Magdeburg. And the same for the local recurrence. There is no doubt that the radical operation gives better um, oncological results. But 
if you see it, the mortality per operative, all are in favor of local strategies. The same for major post-operative complications. And the same, and it is very important for the patients for permanent stoma after the treatment. So, the question is, can we complete it? Can we make first a local resection, and then if the pathologist says, well, uh, the result is not good, or the tumor is not suitable for this kind of treatment, then we complete and we make um, radical resection after the local resection. And this work is uh, it's also from 2018, compared results of the completing TME after local resection versus TME, 41 to 41 patients. And they have seen that the operation takes longer, more complications, more surgical complications, more anatom um, anastomotic complications, and more violations of the mesorectum. So it's not like this that we can simply complete it with the radical operation after the, after the local technique. The key problem for us as a surgeons is we do need information from the radiologist and we do need um, good information. And this is the question, how reliable is the MRI and how reliable is the uh, possibility um, to judge the results. And I think this work is also from 2018 from Ontario. All GI radiologists were invited. They have uh, 111, 73 responses. And they first they performed webinar and uh, some kind of training, and then five rectal MRIs had to be described. And the reliability was measured by Kappa score. Kappa score is something that if you compare the results from different, different, different persons and different, different groups, if all have the same opinion, it's one. If nobody, it's zero. So the distance to the mesorectal fascia has a Kappa score of 58, uh, 0, 50, point 50, 58, it means it's something better than flipping a coin. With flipping a coin, you have 50%. But in the t uh, TK injury, uh, status of the lymph nodes, death of invasion, there is no, uh, uh, there are different opinions of radiologists trained in the same way on the same patients. And they have made uh, subgroup analyses, and there were no difference if stratified by experience or by volume. So actually, we are looking for a crystal ball, and we need a future teller, is this lymph node involved or not? And these are results from Germany, from, from the University of Heidelberg. They have analyzed their patients operated between 2001 and 2012, and they have performed TME in 68 patients. All of these patients were classified as nodal negative prior to surgery. And T1 tumors, and they have compared different strategies of describing tumors and lymph nodes as uh, uh, not involved in the classification of Hermannek. This is the, the old German school from Erlangen. Uh, the pathological uh, classification of Kikuchi and the uh, classification of Hayes. And we see 13% of these patients, so every eight patients were, was nodal positive. And in so-called low-risk tumors, according to Hermanek, it was 14% of patients, Kikuchi 12, Hayes 16. These patients 
were theoretically low-risk tumors but had metastatic lymph nodes. So, unfortunately, none of the in investigated parameters could predict the status of the lymph nodes. Further looking uh, for a crystal ball, this is American uh, analysis from US data from SEER uh, database 2004-2012 with 1600 of patients, radical resection by T1 rectal cancer, and then all the specimens were more, uh, 12 or more lymph nodes. 16% of these patients had nodal positive lymph nodes. And you see there are some relations with the tumor size uh, and we're grading, but even in the smaller tumors, tumors which are smaller than one centimeter, 21 versus 200, it means every 10th patient is nodal positive despite of the very small tumor smaller than one centimeter. We have also the problem with the literature because we should believe every three, four, five years that the new technique will uh, change our world and, and will uh, solve all our problems. And this is a um, paper dealing on the, uh, on the, um, on the base of um, transanal TME about publications between 2009 and 2017. They have analyzed 73 publications. Most of them are case series, and they have, uh, they have uh, revealed a spin in this publication in 75%. What does it mean a spin? A spin is a conclusion which is not based on the results. Taking this thing shortly. And you see it, uh, we have 75% uh, of any spin in these publications. For ex mostly, if it is reporting a case series, as it, they would have a um, um, comparison group claiming advantage without comparison group and recommend further stages. Um, with uh, no reason to do it. <laughs> and we also should believe that the new techniques are better and deliver better oncological results. This is uh, analysis, it will be published in July 2019 uh, in Annals of Surgery, but I can present it to you today. Open versus laparoscopic versus robotic and transanal treatment of rectal cancer. 29 randomized studies with over 6,000 patients. No significant differences in morbidity, conversion rate, reoperation, Anastomotic leak, nodes retrieved, involved distal margin of survival. So if you can perform your operation in the safe matter, the approach you use doesn't matter. Blood loss is of course bigger in the open technique than laparoscopic and robotic. Operative time is much longer in robotic compared to laparoscopic and the shortest operation remains open. The postoperative morbidity is bigger in open than laparoscopic, more wound infections in open than laparoscopic and robotic. Usual parameters, time to defecation is longer in open, hospital stay is longer in open. But look at this point. There are more incomplete or nearly complete mesorexal specimens after laparoscopic procedures compared with open procedures. 
and we have more involved circumferential margins in laparoscopic than in transonal. Then we always hear a recommendation to use guidelines, but there are different guidelines and there is no concordance um, in these guidelines. This is the this is the um, paper from group of uh, from Paris Techis in, in in London, comparing from I suppose it's from this year. It's comparing American guidelines with ESMO guidelines, European and in the Japanese. And you see for the early rectal cancer, Q1, two and zero, transanal excision, if appropriate, well. It doesn't help us a lot, or transabdominal res resection. Then ESMO, there is no question of local resection. This is all, only question how much adjuvant therapy is here necessary. In Japanese, as usual, there is also no question of the local uh, uh, resection, but it's a question of the extent of the lymphadenectomy. Uh, so this is the comparison of the guidelines. And what we never should forget is the patient's preference. And there is a difference between patient preference and physician um, preference and the patient's per perspective and physician perspective. This is a work from 2018 from Canada where 50, when 50 patients who survived rectal cancer were compared with um, nearly 400 physicians dealing with uh, rectal cancer. And the question was, what are you willing to, to pay for avoiding surgery? It was a question of the rectal amputation. And uh, it, was, it was performed in the, in, in, in the context of the watch and wait strategy. Patients did accept it to regrowth risk increase of 20%. It means, for example, from 0 to 20%, and decreased survival chance also of 20% from 80 to 60. In contrary, the physicians, the doctors, accepted only 5% increase of regrowth risk and decreased survival also only of 5%. So there are words apart. And coming to the end, also the question of patient perspective. These were patients from New England, from, 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 from the US. All they have had colorectal surgery and the response rates was, uh, from a tertiary center response rate was 27%. So what is most important for the patient, most important for the patient was not to have a permanent stoma. Then being cured of cancer, no complications. And then, these are numbers between 70 and 80 percent, then the length of hospitalization, 13, use of lap laparoscopic, 14, length of incision, 4, and visible incision, 2 percent. You can see it is also when this uh, diagram, most important things and not so important things from the patient's point of view. So the conclusions, there are no simple answers. Very important is informed concern and discussion with the patient. What is the patient uh, preference? to survive at any price or to have a quality of life at any price. This will influence our strategy. There is a significant bias in the literature, no clear guidelines, and fortunately for us, surgery remains art and not a mass production. Thank you very much.